to honor a career dedicated to enhancing the quality of hospitals. The International Academy of Design and Health is giving Derek Parker the Lifetime Achievement Award. Derek is an explorer, and I think it comes from his passion for sailing. I hate Asia Minor, I can't bear them gone, and I shudder to think of the awful... For 30 years, he was the captain at the helm of the Anshan and Allen architectural ship, and I think the quality of the work was reflective of his leadership. I like America, I have played around, every flappy, happy hunting ground, and I find America okay. I've been about a bit, but I must admit, he encouraged people to do their best. I like the sense of freedom. The Golden Gate Bridge is off to starboard. God, what a day. The fact that I was born, raised and educated in England is a major influence. I was born in Lancashire, 1934. Essentially a working class family. My father got a job in the Midlands. He was a policeman until the outbreak of the Second World War, and then he became a Spitfire pilot. My mother was extremely bright. She wasn't well educated. But I think she was probably the most important influence on me. I remember clearly in 1940, the night that Coventry was destroyed. And then years later, I was a very young member of the architectural department rebuilding the city of Coventry. But I was feeling a little stifled by post-World War II Britain. Well, I'd been with Anshin and Allen for about four or five years when Derek was hired. And it was a very delightful addition to the firm. The fact that I, as a young man, decided to come to the United States, major influence. He just moved right in as a player in the team and in the, in the end up being a partner. To do good work, you have to have great clients. And they're rare. Who were your architectural influences? Well, certainly Bob Anshin and Steve Allen, whose firm I joined when I first came to San Francisco. It was a small general practice. There might have been, I don't know, 25 people. I learned a lot about integrity. I learned a lot about honesty. I learned about persistence. Derek is a risk taker. The firm had an opportunity to develop its first hospital. Bob and Steve asked me if I'd like to do that. I said, sure, I'd love to do that. I mean, I was really quite ignorant. I thought pediatrics might be care of the feet. You know, I didn't know anything. He's a storyteller. But I then went to work as an orderly in a hospital for six months at Mount Zion in San Francisco and just learned how the hospital functions. He's a leader. We built uh, 225 beds for four and a half million dollars. Good Samaritan Hospital in Santa Clara Valley. Shortly after I became a partner, uh, Bob Anshin died. I think the two events are unrelated, but I'm not absolutely sure about that. And in 1965, I took on the second generation ownership of that practice, and I held it in trust. How did the rest of his family feel about him being in America? Very proud. Yeah? Because he did so exceptionally well. Mm -hmm. And he never lost touch with his family. So my name is uh, Pierluigi Serino. I am uh, uh, an Italian architect. I'm Kevin Shaw. I'm a lighting designer. Ashley and Alan alumni. Uh, definitely a Derek alumni. I met Derek in 1982. I'm at an age now where some of my younger colleagues have been remodeling and restoring some of the buildings I did when I was a young architect. I mean, the first project I did with Anshin and Allen was the refurbishment of a church which had been one of Derek's first projects at Anshin and Allen back in 1963. An absolutely fabulous building, the Stockton Central Methodist Church. A project that was a historic building but with an architect who is still alive and practicing. What we have here is a small community church 
in the Central Valley of California, which uh, I designed uh, nearly 50 years ago. It's a community that doesn't have a lot of money, so we didn't have a lot of money to spend, but we wanted to make sure we got the feeling of a religious space, similar to the Gothic medieval cathedrals of Europe. These concrete forms we call the bents are just poured from a single form, and then as we move towards the fellowship hall, we make the bents smaller and we place them further apart and create a space for their fellowship activities. Faith in form. Some spirit got to you. You got steel and stone, concrete and wood to come to life. Maybe architects are striving for immortality in some way. Derek's greatest legacy, changing children's hospitals environment forever, worldwide, starting with Packard Children's Hospital at Stanford, and including, of course, Dombecker, Meyer, Great Ormond Street, setting up new benchmarks for other architects worldwide in the design of children's hospitals. My wife and I had lost two children. So I knew what it was like to lose a child. And uh, I was interested in creating an environment of support again for families who have sick children and will lose some of those children. And the architecture comes for nothing. I mean, the architecture takes place naturally after that. And then we wanted a, almost a non-entrance. So you enter, but you're almost immediately into the garden. That was an attempt on our part to try to reduce the stress level for I kids see. when they're coming to the medical center. Well, it really works. Yeah, you know, we're in an urban area, but you don't know that. You don't know that. Healthy, educated kids are the foundation of civilization. And my intuition at that time was that architecture had a role to play in that. It felt like a family, and Derek was, without any doubt, the father. I remember every team on every project. When a new person started in the office, he always made time to go and introduce himself to that person and find out about where their interests were in architecture, as well as their home life. I think the responsibility of the leader is to create the vision and to make sure that that's clear that the goals are clear and that the roles and responsibilities are clear. And then often it's a matter of getting out of the way and letting people do what they can do. So there's somebody at the helm who knows what they're doing. Uh, we've got a good point of sale. Uh, I can spend some time trimming the sails to maximize the efficiency. That's the difference between being good and being great. I'm not a detail person. I don't like detail. I mean, I, I, I love detail. I admire detail. I'm not good at that. I'm uh, Alastair Guthrie, and I'm a, a director of Arup. And I've known Derek for probably over 25 years. Well, they do structural engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, plumbing engineering, acoustics. We went to, to California with just two of us um, uh, initially. Broadly educated, um, creative people. We gave them a project and they opened an office in our office. And Arup now probably has several thousand people in the United States doing all sorts of interesting projects. Projects of the complexity that hospitals have need to be dominated by big ideas, or else they're very difficult to master. Derek has a very unusual capacity to extract the essence of things. He's a great educator, somebody who entrusts people, delegates, and makes you rise up. This model illustrates the brand new project that Derek envisioned and designed and how it integrates into the 1920 version of the project that was built immediately after the 1906 earthquake in San Francisco. There's a sort of moment of 
intuition. It's a diagram you can put on the back of a napkin. In fact, it frequently starts on the back of a napkin, often with a wine glass stain on the back of it. Um, and then you go to work. And really is a, a fabulous new facility that really sets a new standard for the quality of life in long-term care healthcare facilities throughout the world. There were three big ideas. The first is the use of an axis across the valley. The second idea was one really of the social behavior within the unit of having individual rooms for the residents. So each resident has a window. And that was a principle through the history of the project. And the third guiding principle was the development here of the link, or the esplanade, we call it. So this is like Main Street. This is essentially the heart of the complex. All of the community-wide activities, such as the library, the art program, the hairdresser, the uh, cafeteria, and so on. Placing it here was so brilliant to have all that afternoon sunshine. It just makes it so nice. He can articulate very complex thoughts and concepts in very simple, very elegant diagrams, phrases. Patients have become detectives and they're looking for clues. The patient is the centre of the focus. The diagnostic attributes happen around him. Three beauticians, and they're all there when our customers come in, and they do the haircut, and the moustache trim, or the, the, the hair colouring, and the do. The building offers a torrent of clues. The vase of flowers in the lobby communicates enormous amount of information. Right? Somebody here cares. And if they care about a vase of flowers in the lobby, maybe they'll care about me. People respond well when there's a pleasant, non-trendy environment. Lovely colors. We want the building to be like a good friend, well-mannered, not egotistical. It's just amazing how it's come to life. Quiet, thoughtful, confident. That's what this whole esplanade does, is add meaning and vibrancy and socialization and quality to the resident's life. So it's no longer an institution, it's their home and it's their community. Right light and air and a quality of environment improve health outcomes. He has the ability, I think, to bring together all of the parties, the client, uh, the architect, the engineer, the healthcare providers. It enables everybody to get the best out of the collaboration. He doesn't have an ego. He really brings all the good ideas to the table, adopts them and makes them better. Staff do a better job when they feel the place is pleasant. I'm Sister Anthony. I'm the administrator here and I've been here about eight years because it's just such a beautiful home. These are the gentlemen that designed this building. Didn't they do a great job? Yes. I mean, everyone loves the, the lighting and the... 30, maybe more than 30 years. We were all praying that things would work out. It was a big story. This place is gorgeous. He said, I feel like I'm going on a vacation coming yes. in here. Yeah. I, you know, this, is, this is unbelievable. <laughs> it's a fun place. Now this is the jewel of all of our homes. Well, that's good to hear that. Yeah. Thank you. You'd be surprised how many developers want to get this off our hands. Oh, yeah. That's right. Help you out. The last letter I got was, we can't believe you've never called us with this great opportunity. <laughs> we can give you a couple million dollars for this property <laughs> for your company. He's a risk taker, and because of that, he has actually succeeded to bring a lot of innovation. You know, one thinks of art programs that in children's hospital as being art for children. Actually, it's really art for parents. And 
often when the child is sleeping and often at night and the parent doesn't want to go home, they'll wander the halls. What's been wonderful about working here over the last 30 years been the integration of art into the patient environment. Absolutely. Um, my name is Terry Spring. I'm a vice president at St. Joseph's Medical Center and we uh, we probably have 40 to 60 pieces of original commissioned artwork that have been put into the hospital uh, in conjunction with Anshin and Allen. It's a museum quality art program. And Derek, this particular piece of artwork here, which comes from Verona, represents to us the nesting egg, very symbolic for our women's and children's infant center here on the first floor. Many people ask why this piece is where it is, mm -hmm. because it's in a sort of fairly arbitrary looking spot in this courtyard. Yes. But in fact, this is the centroid of the curved wall that forms the main entrance. Okay, to connect the existing hospital to the new pavilion, basically we pushed the columns out and uh, created a beam out of the trusses, the walkway. This is a giant beam, like a moment frame beam. By pushing the columns out, we created more stability. It's like standing. Right. Put some columns to the left, some columns to the right, and this way they are balance each other. Dr. Shang, who is very much into feng shui, said this is the centroid of the curved wall that forms the main entrance. This is the center of energy, and that's why this piece is exactly where it is. Twenty years ago, I co-founded a not-for-profit organization called the Center for Health Design. It was like tossing information into a pond and hoping it would ripple through an industry. We were particularly looking at how to make healthcare facilities more energy efficient, more sustainable, and that was a long time before this became a very popular thing to do. My name is Peter Sher, I'm an architect. Uh, with a strong interest in healthcare facility design and construction. And I first met Derek in 1991 in London. I did open an office in London and spent many years there fairly recently. Mrs Thatcher was reshuffling the National Health Service. Thatcher's government had uh, announced the private finance initiative. And it was Roger's idea who said, uh, Derek, you've grown up in a market-driven healthcare system. Maybe there's something in America that we could learn from. So why don't you come over here? I'd worked on hospitals, so I was familiar with some of the Americanisms, and we formed Ancient Dyer Associates. And Roger was a detail man. You know, always at school. I'd be the conceptual guy, and Roger was a detail guy. And we began finding a ready market for uh, the product that we were offering. And tried to create market forces within the NHS to generate more efficiency. Outstanding, no question about that. Particularly in being able to link design and patient care and the economics of managing healthcare facilities. I first met Derek and his team in about 1993. Healthcare architecture and planning was very much in the doldrums within the NHS. The NHS wasn't ready for that, but gradually it caught up. The project in Newcastle, Anchin Allen won as part of a competition. The design was very innovative. There were two hospitals there. One was a cancer and renal services centre. The other one was a children's hospital and a trauma centre. Both hospitals have absolutely wonderful atria space running right down the middle of the hospital. The Children's Hospital is a circular building. It's a fun building. It has got a cinema, a food court. People go in there and it's difficult to understand that it is indeed a hospital. Well, what Anshin Allen was trying to do, chaired by Dave Parker, uh, it was to create a social and cultural center, a happy place. Everybody who comes to the hospital for medical treatment and their visitors and families enjoy being here. Make them be happy. It helps healing. When I was helping them do 
essentially was become a better client and helping them become better at what they did, which wasn't architecture, it was taking care of patients. It was inspirational to design team. A modern patient environment, which is healing, this space has children's cinema in it, it has a restaurant, cafeteria, art gallery, it has shops, and you name it, it has a changing, basically, uh, environment, day and night, and lighting, very rich lighting. Because lighting has to react to the use of the space. It has to react to the architecture. And certainly in a space like this, it has to respond to the natural light that comes in. The idea very much is to use light as another material within the whole architectural scheme and not impose it as something on top. But I, like but I think of myself really not English or really not American. I think of myself as being Californian. I shall return the California allows you to try things and fail, and get up and dust yourself off and go do it again. It's not an accident that Silicon Valley is in California. So it's recognizing a lifetime of dedication and innovation in the field of health healthcare. With his right hand, my father drew innumerable lines, angles, circles, and diagonals using all kinds of pencils, rulers, and shiny black inks. He caressed my mother's hair and mine too when I was a child to reassure me. He opened bottles of wine and bottles of mineral water, but mostly bottles of wine. <laughs> <laughs> the work that my family likes best is probably the Packard Children's Hospital at Stanford. And that's a good piece of work. Which is the one that you think? The expansion of my deck. The most recent project. Oft when upon my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon the inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the golden daffodils. Stories are very important. I think maybe my greatest success might be that I think I've encouraged, trained, mentored some extraordinary people. Yeah, well, thank you very much. It was a very happy time to work with Derek and he's, he really he should be acknowledged what he has achieved. A perfect example of a, 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 a an imaginative architect. That he could do all that and be such a nice person as well um, is, is something we would all aspire to. But this is the course now for the America's Cup in the centre of the bay here, just off the city front.